Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. I want to talk about Paul McCartney's two new songs. And these songs were dropped, I guess, a week ago or a little over a week ago. A lot of people have been discussing these songs. And I wanted to wait to Record Store Day, Black Friday, because I picked up the brand new Paul McCartney songs on a single. Which is really good, a good way to hear these. Now, I had played them a few times and uh, wanted, wanted to just really soak them in, get more familiarized with them before I made my official opinion on them. And uh, this is nice. I recommend it if you can still find uh, this 45. I mean, they had a lot of these pressed up. It seems everybody's successful at getting a copy. So good luck. Hopefully you don't have to pay ridiculously inflated prices on eBay uh, for this, a lot of people. So anyway, um, I think both songs are pretty good. And uh, a lot, that seems to be the consensus. I mean, some people don't care for them, but uh, most people are saying that they enjoy them. Now, the first song, uh, I guess you'd call it Side A, Home Tonight, I really like that much better. Uh, I think that's my favorite of the two songs. It amazes me endlessly. It always has how this man can continually, since he was a teenager, since he was like, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 years old, how he can write melodies and make them all sound different and continue to have stuff on disc that's stuck in your head after you hear it you know catchy earworms as they call them it, it, it just impresses me this man is tireless with this he's a workaholic and his talent and gift knows no no bounds so uh home tonight immediately is, is catchy uh i kind of enjoyed it right away and that doesn't really happen for me for all of Paul's stuff. You know, I was thinking about how often I'd buy a new Paul album. And this goes way back. This goes back to like the late 70s and into the 80s and 90s and beyond. Every time I play a new Paul McCartney album, it takes a couple of listens before, in most cases, where the choruses you know, really start to appeal to me and where I really uh, get into it. I don't always just love everything on first listen. This this Home Tonight song was immediately uh, catching and, and it grabbed me, you know, very catchy. Um, so uh, it's pleasant. And, and what I think when I hear it is it, it's simple. You know, there's nothing about this song, nothing about either one of these songs that's complicated or profound as usual. You know, simple lyrics, trite lyrics, you might say, you know, uh, um, I want to take you home tonight. I want to make sure you're all right. You know, I mean, stuff like that. You know, <laughs> you know the words are just like most often with Paul, not always. You know, just basic stuff. Nothing uh, that's going to make you soul search or anything most of the time. I'm not going to say all of the time. And uh, it works in a case like this. Simple but highly effective for Home Tonight. Um, and his voice on Home Tonight sounds very good. Uh, these are supposed to be, from what I'm hearing, more songs from the Egypt Stations sessions. Supposedly he's got a lot of these. You know, he's been releasing bonus tracks off those sessions here and there. Uh, and uh, they seem to be never-ending. Uh, but his voice doesn't sound like today's Paul to me. It sounds like it might be an older recording. I'm really curious to know, for 100% certain, if the song Home Tonight is an older song, uh, was recorded a while ago. I'm not sure of that. I'm not saying it is, but his voice really sounds good. If it, if it is a, a newer recording in the last year or so, I got to say, he sounds really good. Now, the B-side uh, is called In a Hurry. Uh, in a Hurry, I, I, it's, what's interesting is uh, with a lot of the opinions going around on the Internet, a lot of people say they like Home Tonight better, but there's also a lot of people that say they prefer In a Hurry more. So that is really, really cool that uh, the, the opinion is flipped for a lot of people. You know, not everybody uh, feels the same way about the, the single. So that's cool. Each song has its favorite. But I, I definitely don't think it's as good as Home Tonight. But it's still um, interesting because when In a Hurry starts out, we get a story. You know, Paul tells a story. It makes me think of songs like, uh, you know, Eleanor Rigby or perhaps Another Day, you know, where Paul is actually... Uh, thinking about a woman and kind of like talking about her plight or what she's going through. You know, I enjoy that part. I like the storytelling part of it. But for me personally, when it gets to the chorus, never too late to celebrate, never too late to celebrate, never too late to celebrate, whatever it is, to me it gets a little bit workmanlike. 
when I hear that part, it's like, oh, let me just throw in a chorus and find out something to repeat over and over again. So I, I'm not really keen on the chorus of it, uh, you know, uh, if, if you can call it a chorus, whatever that is that they go through over and over again uh, during the song, saying that over and over again, Paul is repeating. Uh, I think it kind of like tapers off a little bit, the song quality, when it gets to that. I mean, it's still enjoyable. Uh, it's not a, a favorite of mine, but it's it's enjoyable. It's funny, uh, uh, on record store day, I was in my record store, I was actually playing this 45, and there was an old woman next to me. She was older, you know, I, mean, I don't know how old, uh, 60s, maybe, in her 60s, and she's looking through the records, and the song In a Hurry was on, and near the end of it, as it was playing, she said, ah, this is terrible. He ought to be ashamed of himself. I mean, I didn't love that Never Too Late to Celebrate bit, but uh, I'm not a violent man. I don't believe in striking women, but I wish somebody else would have given her a slap. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. What are you talking about? Man's, you know, the man's doing great for his age. This is fantastic. Anyway, so that's my feeling on the new single, Home Tonight and In a Hurry. You know, uh, final thoughts, though, again, you know, for years we've all wished that Paul McCartney would come out with what he used to call years ago a cold cuts collection imagine a box set a nice comprehensive box containing i don't know how many discs a dozen or more discs of all paul mccartney's bonus tracks all his b-sides all his extras you know he has not really shown that he wants to do that although he's hinted hinted at it over the years uh, and i started thinking just this morning as i was preparing to make this video i started thinking you know what what would it be like i wonder if you approve of this idea or not this is an interesting topic for discussion how do you feel about the idea that maybe uh, after Paul is gone, after he leaves this earth, uh, maybe his family has instructions to put out more Paul McCartney albums? Did you ever think of that? Like, they kind of like what's being done with, I guess, like Jimi Hendrix. You know, I think they do that with Jimi Hendrix, his uh, estate. You know, um, after an artist is deceased, uh, they continue to have new albums. You can do that with Paul. He, he could continue to have new albums every year or two. <laughs> they take every one of his uh, bonus tracks and B-sides and oddities and put them on like, you know, 12 to 13, 14 tracks per record, whatever. Uh, it could be going into a, a long time with more new Paul McCartney product. Think about it. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much.